acceptable performance or condition is the cracks resulting from normal shrinkage are acceptable. However, cracks in excess of four millimeters in width are not acceptable. Okay, so when we're dealing with cracks in concrete floors, this, the article specifies normal shrinkage cracks. And the way I like to explain normal shrinkage cracks to a homeowner is I use a fresh brownie analogy. Think of a fresh brownie, you take it out of the oven, you pull it straight across, the surface will have a stretched appearance where it cracks. The concrete is the same. It'll have that stretched appearance when it's a shrinkage crack, you see here, as if it's been pulled and still had some elasticity when you pulled it. So those are the type of things you're looking for in the look of the crack. Look for the point of origin, your plumbing, corners, that sort of thing, all indicate that it's just normal shrinkage. As the concrete dries, it gets smaller. The warranty it falls under is the one-year warranty working materials, and cracks resulting from normal shrinkage of materials caused by drying after construction are excluded from the statutory warranty. And the action that must be taken by the builder is cracks in excess of the acceptable condition shall be repaired. And general remarks about this in the guidelines state that generally concrete floor slabs are not structural. Concrete floors naturally crack during curing due to shrinkage. Actual cracks shall be determined using a wire feeler gauge inserted inside the crack. Since the concrete floor slabs do not have to carry the load of the building, shrinkage cracks are generally considered aesthetic. Where vertical or lateral movement is evident, further investigation may be required. Where repairs are necessary, color and or texture will not match the surrounding concrete. The article says that we use feeler gauges. The Terry on reps will all use Allen keys because they are a set size, they're solid, you can shove them in the, into the crack. You always want to measure inside the crack, not at the surface because the surface falls away and makes a wider crack. Uh, coins, not a good idea because it's only measuring the surface. So what we do is we take an Allen key, find the biggest one that will fit in the crack and shove it in about a centimeter or so. And if it goes into the crack, that's your size. So in this case, we have a crack that is two millimeters. So that's well within the tolerance of four. A four millimeter Allen key looks like this. So it's a fairly sizable crack. You also want to be looking for things like displacement where one side is higher than the other. So that could indicate something has shifted. It might be normal settlement, but if you have that, get a third party and an engineer to look at it so that it's, you're sure there's nothing wrong underneath. In this case, we have moisture coming up through the cracks. It's always a sign to get somebody else to look at it, see what's going on. If you have excess number of cracks, is a big one too. If you've got an excess number of cracks, look into it. That's not normal. Is the bond break done properly? Or was the concrete pour too thin or too, too wet or the wrong strength? All these things can add to excess cracking. In this case, the cracks here are pretty normal other than the moisture, okay? Any questions? I have a question. Um, so there's water on the floor. What is that caused from? Okay, in this case, we've had a lot of rain lately and it appears the water table has risen and the moisture is percolating up through the cracks. It's something that, as a builder, you should have checked out to find out what's going on. Is my drainage system working correctly? Or is there a water table problem? So would Thank this you. be warranted now because there's moisture coming up from the cracks? It possibly could be. I can't say yes or no. It would depend on the cause. Is there a problem or is this a one-off deal? Did we have so much rainfall that it caused a sudden rise in the water table? It could be a one-off deal where it's, it's not a defect, it was just a fact of the weather. What do you recommend that uh, we do to fix this? The first thing is I would check on the water, to the weepers and so forth to make sure they're draining properly. If a repair is required, uh, a hydraulic cement to fill it so that it doesn't shrink, it stays good and firm. Make sure you notify your homeowner that if you do a repair, it's not going to match. The CPG article is quite clear on that. At the PDI time, if you come into the home, there's no, no cracks in the floor. At that time, I would explain to the homeowner right away, there's no cracks in this floor today, but there is a possibility you are gonna get some shrinkage cracks as time goes on. That just saves coming back after the cracks appear and saying, oh, there's shrinkage cracks, because then it sounds like an excuse. You know, explain it beforehand if you have to. What's the odds of these cracks increasing in size? 
Well, they are going to get wider. The concrete is still curing. It can take up to two years to fully cure. So they are going, it is still shrinking a little bit. You're not going to see as drastic a change in them over the, after the first year. Uh, so a four millimeter crack is quite substantial. So 1.5 millimeters is, unless there's something major going on underneath, those cracks aren't going to widen that much. But they may get a little wider. It takes time for the concrete to fully cure.